رمضان مجال الصلوات طوبى للنفس بتقواها رمضان كريم 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 شهر عظيم 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 رمضان كريم 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 شهر عظيم 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 قم للعباد تلقى السعادة قم للعبادة تلقى السعادة تلقى السعادة تلقى النعيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله الذي هدانا لهذا وما كنا لنحتدي لولا أن هدانا الله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله الكريم صلى الله عليه وسلم This is Islam the Natural Way, your source of inspiring presentations for this blessed month. In today's program, we will examine some tips for a fruitful Ramadan. To guide us through this discussion, here is Sheikh Abdul Alim Rahim, right after a recitation from Al Quran by Hafiz Saleh Rahim. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وسارعوا إلى مغفرة من ربكم وجنة عرضها السماوات والأرض أعدت للمتقين الذين ينفقون في السراء والضراء والكاظمين الغيظ والعافين والعافين عن الناس والله يحب المحسنين والذين إذا فعلوا فاحشة أو ظلموا أنفسهم ذكروا الله ذكروا الله فاستغفروا لذنوبهم ومن يغفر الذنوب إلا الله ولم يصروا على ما فعلوا وهم يعلمون صدق الله العظيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين سبحانك لا علم لنا إلا ما علمتنا إنك أنت العليم الحكيم اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا وزدنا علما وعملا متقبلا يا رب العالمين آمين Beloved brothers and sisters السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته As for non-Muslim guests may the guidance of Allah سبحانه وتعالى be with all of you Permit me today, insha'Allah, to share with you some tips for a fruitful Ramadan. Pure intention. That we have pure intention to fast in this month of Ramadan with Iman and with Ihtisab. And to do all of the actions that we perform with Iman and Ihtisab. Because this is part of Taqwa. Imam Ibn Al-Qayyim, he says, uh, Rahimahullah, he says that Taqwa is to do the acts of obedience we do with Iman and with Ihtisab and to avoid the evil with Iman and Ihtisab so Iman and Ihtisab is very important Iman means doing the action with firm faith in Allah out of obedience to Him that firm faith that Allah has commanded me to do this I am doing this out of obedience to Him because He has commanded me to do it Ihtisab means sincerely seeking the reward of Allah for doing it so when we fast in the month of Ramadan, we should have that Iman 
that Allah has commanded me to fast, so I'm fasting. And even if it is a little bit difficult for me, I'm still going to go through with it and endure that difficulty. Why? Because Allah has commanded me. I'm not going to make excuses. وَاحْتِسَابًا And when I endure that hardship, I do it sincerely seeking the pleasure of Allah. I don't treat it as a burden. My intention is to gain the pleasure of Allah, so I do it willingly and I'm counting my blessings inshallah. Even though, you know, the Prophet ﷺ has told us that fasting, there's no limit to the rewards of fasting. But we can hope for that reward for all of the good deeds that we do in the month of Ramadan. So intention is pure, that we are doing this with Iman and with Ihtisab. We don't treat it like a burden. Secondly, we have strong resolve and determination. And, and strong resolve and determination, or if you want to say willpower, this is what will help us to endure the difficulties and the challenges we face in this month of Ramadan with respect to the pangs of hunger and thirst and to stand for you know uh, lengthy periods of time in, in, in salah to to spend extra time in the ibadah in the worship of allah whether it be recitation of the quran or the dhikr of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and so on to have that strong resolve will allow us to maintain consistency in uh, our good actions inshallah otherwise you know, we become exhausted, we become bored, we begin treating these uh, good deeds as if they are a burden to us. We can't wait for this month of Ramadan to be finished. We're only counting the days. Uh, I'm sure we've all had those feelings. But if we have this strong resolve, inshallah, we will cherish the moments of the month of Ramadan. We won't want this whole month to slip away so that while yes we are happy with the breaking of the fast and so on we really want to capitalize on the moments that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed us with they say where there is a will there is a way so if we make if our resolve is strong we are determined to push ourselves and to do as much good as we can inshallah we will make a plan and we will work with it to achieve as much as we can in this month of Ramadan and Allah will help us inshallah to achieve that. Thirdly, sincere tawbah in this month. As we said, part of taqwa is that when a, or the person commits sins, he hastens to repent to Allah. So throughout the year we've made mistakes, we've committed sins, we've been uh, disobedient to Allah, we've gone through states of forgetfulness and, and negligence and heedlessness. The month of Ramadan is the time to turn sincerely to Allah and beg His forgiveness. And not just do that once, but on a daily basis. We continue to beg the forgiveness of Allah. The Prophet wasallam said that, I ask Allah's forgiveness a hundred times every day. So, he encouraged us to seek the forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, abundantly every single day as well. And he, all of his sins have, uh, have been forgiven. And what are sins with respect to the Prophet wasallam in comparison to us? What would be considered sins for him is just moments of, uh, of perhaps uh, not being engaged in the remembrance of Allah. That's it. But he's, he used to continuously beg the forgiveness of Allah and he encouraged us to do the same. So every day we should be... Uh, indulged in istighfar, always saying astaghfirullah, astaghfirullah, astaghfirullah. I seek the forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We raise our hands in dua and we beg Allah, Allah's forgiveness for our shortcomings and mistakes in the past. Fourthly, fast with all of the limbs. So when we fast, we're not just avoiding food and drink, but rather we are fasting with all of the limbs from anything that is displeasing to Allah. And as, and as we said before, that taqwa and what constitutes taqwa is to do that which is pleasing to Allah, hoping for His reward. And to avoid that which is displeasing to Him out of fear of His wrath and His punishment. So to fast, which is an act of obedience, must include doing that which is pleasing to Allah. Avoid that, avoiding that which is displeasing to him. We cannot say that we are fasting out of obedience to Allah and whilst fasting we are 
committing acts of disobedience. So we have to fast with all of the lips by trying to avoid whatever situations or circumstances will lead to the displeasure of Allah, whether it is, you know, uh, with our speech or with our hearing or with our sight or with our hands, we try our best to avoid that which is displeasing to Allah whilst fasting so that we do not nullify and weaken our fast, inshaAllah. Fifthly, Qiyam in the month of Ramadan. That we stand in the month of Ramadan with Iman and Ihtisab again. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has told us, man qama Ramadan iman and ihtisab and ghufira lahu ma taqaddama min tabih. Whoever stands in the month of Ramadan with iman and with ihtisab, his previous sins will be forgiven. And we've explained iman and ihtisab before. So to stand in the month of Ramadan, again we do it sincerely seeking the pleasure of Allah, sincerely hoping for the reward of Allah. We don't treat it like a burden. Uh, and... Qiyam includes our fara'id, our fard salawat, as well as the sunnah salawat and salat al-taraweeh, and so on. So, in our fard salawat, we pray in jama'ah. We pray, we try our best to pray 12 raka'at of sunnah mu'akkada along with the five daily salat. And these 12 are two before fajr, uh, four before dhuhr, and two after, or vice versa. So it's two and two, then the farb, then two after. Two after Maghrib and two after Isha. It's two before Fajr, six along with Dhuhr, two after Maghrib and two after Isha. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, whoever prays 12 raka'at of Sunnah, aside from the prescribed farb salawat on a daily, in a day, Allah will build for him a palace in Jannah. What a great reward for uh, this action, let us strive to perform this in our homes, uh, with our families on a daily basis. And with respect to Salat al-Taraweeh, after Salat al-Isha, we perform Salat al-Taraweeh. We can perform 8 raka'at, we can perform 20 raka'at. And then inshallah, we try to get up again before suhoor in the morning, maybe an hour before suhoor, and we perform a few raka'at again, Salat al-Tahajjud, uh, in this most blessed uh, last third of the night when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala answers the dua and the call of those who call upon him and we beg Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the fulfillment of our needs and this qiyam in salat al-taraweeh salat al-tahajjud we should try our best if we can to complete the recitation of the Quran as is the norm in many masajid we try to do it in our homes as well Obviously, there are those who have memorized the Qur'an upon whom it is easier to do so. There are those who may be able to recite from the Mus'haf. And again, in the Nafil Salah, there is no harm, inshallah, in reciting from the Mus'haf uh, to gain the extra reward of standing longer and reciting more, inshallah. So we try our best to do what we can, uh, but we do our Qiyam with Iman and with Ihtisab. Sixthly, recitation of the Qur'an. The month of Ramadan is the month of the Qur'an. And the pious predecessors dedicated and devoted themselves to recitation in this month, more than any other time of the year. And some of them would complete the Qur'an in, in, in the first uh, couple of weeks of the month of Ramadan. Every seven days they would complete the recitation of the Qur'an. And in the last ten days, every three days. So perhaps maybe uh, six times they would complete the recitation of the Qur'an in the month of Ramadan. Five or six times. Some of them even more than that. We can at least try to complete the recitation of the Qur'an once. And that is not very difficult, inshallah. If we divide the Qur'an according to the 30 ajza, the 30 parts of the Qur'an, each part, each juz has 20 pages in the uh, Madani Mus'haf. We take those 20 pages, we try to complete them every day. Every day 20 pages. To make it easier, we don't have to do it all in one sitting. We can divide it according to the salawat. And, uh, we have five daily salah. After or before every salah, we sit uh, maybe 10 minutes and we recite four pages. 
five fours, 20. And we complete the juz for the day. And you cannot count the amount of blessings we receive for that. Again, we do it imanan wahtisaban. We cannot count the blessings for that. Every single letter is 10 blessings. Every single letter. And then Allah multiplies in the month of Ramadan even more, beloved brothers and sisters. This is goodness that we cannot uh, afford to miss and to avoid. So let us dedicate ourselves uh, to doing these good deeds, especially the recitation of the Quran. Uh, seventhly, abundant dhikr. Allah has not commanded us to do anything in the Quran abundantly except the remembrance of Allah. He says, Uthkuru Allaha dhikran kathira. Remember Allah with great abundant remembrance. Abundantly. He didn't say pray abundantly, fast abundantly, and so on, but he said, Remember Allah abundantly. Because this is what constitutes our worship. Uh, you know, it, it converts our whole day into worship by just, uh, you know, letting our tongues remain moist with the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And these are acts that are light on the tongue and they are heavy in the scales of good deeds. Subhanallah, alhamdulillah, Allahu Akbar, la ilaha illallah, astaghfirullah, la hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. And subhanallah wa bihamdihi, subhanallah al-azim, and all of these other adhkar, sending salat, uh, salam, salam, salam on the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Allahumma salli wa sallim ala Sayyidina Muhammad, Allahumma salli wa sallim wa barik ala Nabiyina Muhammad. Uh, you know, these adhkar that we can continue to say even whilst doing other activities, they don't distract us from doing other activities. Then we keep ourselves busy and we gain the blessings, the numerous blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in return. So there's nothing to lose and there's not much effort to put into this beloved brothers and sisters. So let us seize the opportunity. And then uh, eighthly, constant dua. To make a lot of dua. To ask Allah for the fulfillment of our needs. Because Allah is the one who answers dua. And especially when we face times of difficulties and hardships, we need, we, we, we see that we need the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but we are always in need of Allah. This is the time when we, when we recognize it the most. And this is the time especially to turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But even more importantly, to turn to Allah at all times, even in times of ease. Ta'arraf ila Allahi fi ya'rifka fi shiddah. Get to know Allah in times of ease and He will know you in times of difficulty. So make dua, ask Allah for the fulfillment of our needs. Allah knows our needs more than we even know them. And no problem is too big for Him to solve. So let us not feel that we have to exhaust every other avenue. And when there is not, no other door in front of us, open in front of us, then we'll say, okay, oh Allah, help me. No. But rather it should be our attitude to ask Allah first. But, you know, again, we become forgetful. Sometimes we get into a frenzy, we start running helter-skelter, and trying every other means, and when nothing works, then we remember, you know, I should make dua. It should be the opposite way around. May Allah forgive us for our shortcomings and mistakes and our forgetfulness. But let us turn to Allah and let us beg Him. Let us ask Him. And Allah loves when we ask Him. And He does not like when we do not ask Him. You alone, we worship you alone, we ask for help. And your Lord has said, call on me and I will answer you. But we must not be hasty. We must not make dua once or twice or thrice and then say, well, okay, where is the answer? I haven't seen the answer, so I will stop making dua. No, the Prophet wasallam said that, يُسْتَجَابُ لِأَحَدِكُمْ مَا لَمْ يُعَجِّلْ يَقُولُ دَعَوْتُ فَلَمْ يُسْتَجَبْ لِي Your dua will be answered so long as you do not become hasty and you say, well, I was making dua and I didn't see any answer, so I'm not making any more. No, Allah will answer. But we don't force Allah to act as we want. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does what He wills. He is not asked about what He does. But He will do, rest assured, 
He will do and choose for us that which is best, inshallah, once we have the iman and we make the dua sincerely. So we ask Allah, Allah will answer. The answer may not come immediately. It may not necessarily come exactly in the form that we want it to come as well because Allah knows that that is not the best for us. Allah says, عَسَىٰ أَن تَقْرَوْهُ شَيْئًا وَهُوَ خَيْرٌ لَكُمْ عَسَىٰ أَن تُحِبُّ شَيْئًا وَهُوَ شَرٌ لَكُمْ وَاللَّهُ يَعْلَمُ أَنْتُمْ لَا تَعْلَمُونَ Perhaps you dislike something, but that is good for you. And perhaps you would like something so, uh, to be done a certain way or to have something a certain way, but Allah knows that is not good for you. Allah knows and you don't know. So when we make dua to Allah and we ask Him for something, perhaps Allah knows that what we are asking for is not good for us. There is something that is better, so He gives us that which is better. It is a blessing in disguise. So let us not be hasty. Let us ask sincerely. And Allah will choose for us that which is best, insha'Allah. Ninthly, let us share in this month of Ramadan. The month of Ramadan is the month of generosity. Rasulullah was the most generous person. And in the month of Ramadan, he was even more generous. Like the free-blowing breeze, as he was described by his companions. His goodness touched everyone. He was generous and he was giving to everyone. You know, in one way or another, whatever he had, he was sharing. This is the believer. This is the, what we should aspire to be like, to always want to be of benefit to others. When we see others in need, our hearts, you know, should, should yearn to, to help those people. We see our brothers and sisters suffering around the world. You know, it should pain our hearts that we see this going on. And Alhamdulillah, Allah has blessed us with what we have. And we wish we could share some of that with others. So to share. And so to do what we can based on our abilities. Give a bit of charity, a bit of sadaqah, whatever it is we can give. If we are supposed to pay zakah, ensure that we pay the zakah. And especially in this month of Ramadan, it is generally the norm for people to pay their zakah in the month of Ramadan for the uh, multiplied blessings inshallah so let us hasten to do that as well and uh, try in un, in the circumstances to do what we can to feed a fasting person we know that you know in, in, we cannot really do iftar at the masjid as would not, would be the norm but we have neighbors we have friends who are close by we have people who we can probably even cook and drop off some food uh, or give some, send some gifts to them, maybe some dates, whatever it is that they can use to break their fast. And inshallah, we receive the reward for that. So let us not, you know, uh, ignore the avenues that are available. If some avenues are closed, there are still others that are open, inshallah. Let us, uh, you know, improvise. Let us try our best to do what we can under the circumstances, inshallah. And once we have the intention, to do the actions we would normally have performed, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will reward us, inshallah. And finally, beloved brothers and sisters, let us seize the opportunity and not waste time. This is the golden opportunity that Allah has blessed us with in this month of Ramadan. Let us not squander it by being involved in things that are meaningless uh, and not of any benefit, or, or worse than that, things that will bring the displeasure of Allah or weaken our fast or even invalidate its blessings. Let us seize the opportunity to do as much good as we can. Because if the month of Ramadan is to slip away without us gaining the mercy and the forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then we would be real losers. And that would be, we would be the ones to blame for that. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam you know, in the famous hadith, when he ascended the mimbar and he, he went up one stair, uh, one step, and he said, Amin. Second stair, he said, Amin. Third step, he said, Amin. And when he was asked about this, then uh, he told his companions that Angel Jibreel alayhi salam came to him and commanded him for three um, issues, three matters that he should. Say Amin to them. And he said, from among them is that he said, Anf. May his nose be rubbed in the dust. May his nose be rubbed in the dust. Meaning, may he be a loser. Say Amin. 
And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Ameen. To what? One of those categories of people is whoever witnesses the month of Ramadan and he allows the month of Ramadan to slip away without gaining the forgiveness of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. And that is the real loser. Beloved brothers and sisters, you know, uh, if we would normally preoccupy ourselves with some form of entertainment or leisure activity and relaxing and so on, outside of the month of Ramadan, this is the time to really push ourselves. Let us leave that leisure, the activity that will preoccupy us for after the month of Ramadan. And when I say leisure activity, I mean in a way that is pleasing to Allah, of course. Whatever hobby we have that, you know, may preoccupy us, which is permissible, but it will preoccupy us outside of the month of Ramadan, let us leave that for after Ramadan. Let us not preoccupy ourselves with that now. There are more important things to be done right now. So let us strive to seek the pleasure of Allah. So when we would normally be busy, for example, with our phones and social media and, and chatting and all of these things that will really not bring the blessings of Allah for us, even if we are sharing, let's say we're sharing some good uh, you know, information or some knowledge with others, let us focus more on our ibadah. Recite more Quran, do more dhikr of Allah, be involved in more dua than to spend so much time right now on social media and our phones and so on. People preoccupy themselves because they're at home with games, it's all sorts of online games. The month of Ramadan is not the time for that. If you need a little time for relaxation, fine. We need a little recreation time so that we do not become too bored doing one thing, uh, you know, fine. But let's limit that time and get back to our worship, push ourselves as much as possible. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us, beloved brothers and sisters, to truly capitalize on this opportunity and benefit from it as much as possible. May He allow us to develop our taqwa, strengthen our taqwa in this month so that inshallah, we can deal with the whisperings and the temptations of the shaitan and other challenges we face outside of the month of Ramadan with consistency, with steadfastness and uprightness, inshallah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us his mercy and forgiveness. And may he grant us his jannah and save us from the punishment of the hellfire. May he have mercy on all of our deceased. May he grant them ease uh, and rest in their graves. May he make their, their graves gardens from the gardens of paradise, inshallah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant shifa and ease to all those who are ailing, to all those who are suffering around the world. And may he make us of those who are truly grateful for the favors that he has granted us. May he make us of those who are successful and may he grant us his jannah and save us from the punishment of the hellfire. Ameen. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept your efforts and may He grant you and your family success in this world and the hereafter. May He put tremendous blessings in your endeavors. Until tomorrow, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. <laughs>
تلقى السعادة تلقى السعادة تلقى